It's always our pleasure to welcome you to Jamaica Magazine. I'm your host, Adrian Atkinson. Today we take you on a spending spree with the Ministry of National Security. Well, not literally. We're actually showing you the Ministry's expenditure projects for the upcoming financial year. Plus, we drop by the Rocky Valley Resource Center in St. Andrew and remind you of the answers to important questions as government prepares to implement the National Identification System needs. Stay with us. Jamaica's COVID-19 vaccination plan is still in effect. If you wish to make an appointment, please do so online by visiting moh.gov.jm or by calling 888-663-5683. Vaccination still a keep. Go get your jab today. Good day, I'm Theodore Henry and this is your GIS News for Thursday, February 24, 2022. Government will be spending a total of $5 billion on roadworks in the 2022-2023 fiscal year. This was disclosed by Minister Without Portfolio in the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation, Everald Warmington, earlier this week. $300 million is earmarked for emergency work resulting from flooding, $84 million is programmed for gullies, $54 million for bridges, and $74 million to address issues relating to traffic signals. The resources are limited, but we have tried our best and we our best to use it to the best we can. I'm very satisfied that at least we make some inroad or make some difference in the community. The minister, who has responsibility for the works portfolio, was touring roadways in and around Montego Bay St. James that have been identified for rehabilitation and drainage upgrade. They include Cornwall Courts, Green Pond, Valley Heights, Capitol Heights, King Street and North Gully. Mr. Warmington says $10 million each has already been allocated for drainage work in Cornwall Courts and Capitol Heights. Similar projects are to be undertaken in Melbourne Gully and Valley Heights, where box culverts are needed. The National Solid Waste Management Authority, NSWMA, will be receiving an additional 50 compacted trucks to improve garbage collection across the island. $1.8 billion has been budgeted in the 2022-2023 estimates of expenditure to purchase the vehicles under the acquisition of compacted trucks project. The project, which is set to commence in April 2022 and conclude in March 2023, is being funded by the government of Jamaica. It aims to increase the NSWMA's fleet to an acceptable operational level to support work for a cleaner environment. The project is being implemented by the NSWMA, which is an agency under the Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development. The Development Bank of Jamaica, DBJ, will be providing 340 new loan guarantees for micro, small and medium-sized enterprises, MSMEs, in the upcoming financial year. This arrangement is to be facilitated under the Access to Finance for MSMEs project. $750 million has been allocated in the 2022-2023 estimates of expenditure to undertake this and other activities in support of small businesses. It will also give 15 SMEs access to risk capital through the SME fund and facilitate an improved voucher program through the use of the new interactive technological platform. Up to December 2021, under the project, 387 MSMEs have been issued with guaranteed loans and approval of an additional 580 guarantees were supported under the DBJ's Credit Enhancement Facility, CEF. If your loan needs collateral support, your lenders have pre-approved lines available and they're able at the click of a button to approve the guarantee along with the loan. Another $789.7 million has been set aside under the DBJ's Credit Enhancement Program to provide 107 bank guarantees to SMEs during the new financial year. Funding is being provided by the Inter-American Development Bank, IDB. Up to December 2021, 550 bank guarantees were issued to MSMEs under this project. 
Government will be spending over $2.34 billion in the new fiscal year to advance its prevention and care management of non-communicable diseases, NCDs, program. This seeks to strengthen comprehensive policies for the prevention of NCDs and enhance access to upgraded and integrated systems to improve the health of the population. The funds presented in the 2022-2023 estimates of expenditure will finance several targets over the period. These include the completion of detailed drawings, 3D models and bills of quantities for 13 health facilities. Procurement of medical equipment for health centers and hospitals will commence. Construction engineer, medical equipment specialist, quantity surveyor and environmental health specialist consultants will be engaged. The Ministry of Health and Wellness will also be developing and publishing a health app and commencing implementation of managed network services for 105 health centers. And finally, research conducted at the Bustamante Hospital for Children has found that the most common skin conditions among children treated are ringworm in the head, eczema, and allergic reactions to insect bites. Pediatrician and senior registrar at the hospital, Dr. Andrew Burton, shared the results of the research project during a recent JIS think tank. The study won him the awards for Best Student Presentation, Most Impactful Poster Presentation, and the Best Overall Poster Presentation at the 2021 National Health Research Conference, adding to the body of dermatological studies in Jamaica and the Caribbean. The data was taken from a sample of clinical records and walk-in visits to the Bustamante Hospital for Children from 2012 to 2016. It was mostly infants that were seen in the clinic, mostly babies between 0 and 12 months. Infections were the most common thing and those include fungal infections like ringworm, ringworm to the hand, the head, um, the feet, um, also bacterial infections that came on top of other lesions that got infected after or that were primarily bacterial problems and viral infections as well, infestations like scabies. Dr. Burton says he hopes his research will lead to increased education in the public and health sector about the skin conditions affecting children. Knowing the common things will make it more identifiable and can also spark discussion around how to appropriately treat the most common things. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Theodore Henry. Thanks for watching. Feel good, girl, when you're wrapped up in my arms. My name is Barry Salmon, and I want you to tune in. February 27th, it's called Reggae on the Pier. You can't afford to miss that, you hear? Barry says. Much focus has been placed on national security to create a safer Jamaica for all. The ministry has been given a budget of over $99 billion, and we break down some of the spending that will take place in the 2022-2023 financial year. National security is one of the single biggest concerns of Jamaicans and one of the government's key missions to ensure prosperity for the nation. So it's no surprise that it receives a $4 billion increase to its recurrent budget for the 2022-2023 financial year. That plus $6.97 billion for capital spending plus approximately $99 billion at the ministry's disposal to implement policies and interventions that will make Jamaica a safer place for all. On the operations side, three units within the police department received a combined increase of over $490 million to boost the delivery of services and human resources. A large chunk of that will support the training and development of new recruits for the police force with the aim of achieving 1,500 new members annually. We did 1250 this year, 2021. 2022 will do the 1500 and move the force up another 11 or 1200 till we get to at least the 14 toes, that is a constant establishment figure. $59 million more is being pumped into the intelligence unit to enable accurate collection, processing and dissemination of intelligence for investigations. We will be pushing back hard on these criminals. We are not going to give them the space to continue to create the terror they are trying to do. 
More priority is being given to the implementation of community safety initiatives and the expansion of community policing. This will be done through the Police Violence Interruption Strategy and Proximity Policing with a budget of $180.5 million. With $424 million at its disposal, the Passport Immigration and Citizenship Agency, PICA, will be adding more resources to its information and communication technology services. The agency's capacity to detect and prevent fraudulent activities will be enhanced by an allocation of $236 million and from a total of $1.49 billion for border security processing, $193.6 million is included for the implementation of a health electronic travel authorization solution. Five capital projects have been earmarked for the 2022-2023 financial year, all financed by the government through the Consolidated Fund. The Jamaica Defense Force, the JDF, will continue the procurement of surveillance cameras and other hard and software devices to support the Jamaica Eye program. The, the development of the Marine Air Cyber Command as a, as a unit in the JDF was a strategic move to, in fact, create the kind of holistic approach to deal with our, our, um, our coastline and, the, and our coastal uh, zone. That was last year. In the new fiscal cycle, the JDF has been given $2.7 billion to make final payment on one ship and put a deposit on another, along with purchasing coastal surveillance equipment to strengthen the border security efforts. Approximately $319 million has been allocated in the estimates of expenditure to complete the construction of the Forensic Pathology Autopsy Suite. We have to provide a police force with the required facilities physically, scientifically, technologically, and all the support services required to ensure we can do it. We are work, so the budget is crucial. The institutional support and organization is critical, and the legislation becomes crucial as we are working to put all those in place. Construction of the Westmoreland Police Divisional Headquarters will move forward with a $700 million budget. The design has been completed and the contract is up for tender. At station will cost about two, just over $2 billion. We are committed to it and I said it's gone to contracting and being evaluated as we speak and should be able to begin before the end of the year. Meanwhile, the Ministry's five-year security strengthening project will continue to build out the police force's ICT network. Among the targets for the new financial year are the installation of surveillance equipment at the Department of Correctional Services, as well as network drops for JCF high-priority sites. Fiber optic cable will also be purchased for the JCF along with a mobile command center. And the force's case management system, stations record management system, and the jail management software are to be completed. The police department, the budget will be restored. We can build numbers, increase capacity, and provide them with the tools that are required to make it successful. This is one time we don't want you to laugh. It's staying safe on the road is a serious thing. Mr. Taxi driver and bus driver, take time, my man. People, so one stop driver and come off. Cyclists, motorcyclists, pedestrians, all road users using the head. Only for you, cell phone and drive. No, man. Idiot thing that. Road safety is no laughing matter. Because we want you to be around and, and laughing with, with us. us. For a long, long time. time. A message from the National Road Safety Council and National Health Fund. As we've come to embrace a digital society, resources are needed to connect us to the platforms. Through partnership, residents in West Rural St. Andrew now have improved access to information via a resource room at the Rocky Valley Community Center in Stony Hill. The facility was refurbished at a cost of $5 million. Step inside and see for yourself. Today, we not only celebrate the opening of a new facility, but the impact we envisage it will have on the residents. At a cost of $5.1 million, this resource center was brought to its refined state and is now retrofitted with computers and a printer. This brings me great joy, as students will be able to join their school sessions online 
and respond to the various demands that come with learning. To the people of Stony Hill, this is for you. This is for your children, especially in this time when children need access online. And I hope you take good care of it and use it in the proper way. I recognize many families still may not have a device and we are still working. The government is working to make sure that our children are equipped with devices. But if you don't, there are 11 computers here to support you and I'm urging the principal to make use of that. With the COVID-19 pandemic at hand, this could not have come at a better time. If you look at the records, it will show that, well, I know from my records, that over 70% of our students since March last year have not been accessing online platforms for classes. With a resource center like this being open this morning, of course, it will open the way for many students in the Stone Hill community to do the same. So I am sure that 70% will be reduced drastically. The Universal Service Fund as a partner came on board and we did what was necessary to make sure that the people of Stony Hill now more than ever have access to the internet superhighway. There are more Wi-Fi hotspots coming to West Rural St. Andrew. And yes, I did put it in. Lawrence Tavern will have such. Red Hill Center will have such. And of course, here in Rocky Valley, you have this um, center here to access your Wi-Fi connection. This project could be more timely because our children needed ways to get onto the classes, the Zoom classes, the log on this, the Google search. You have the opportunity now. You have no more excuses why you can't be online on a class. Everyone with the password Rocky Valley Hotspot at 123, get ready. Google, Snapchat, Twitter, Google Class, everything is at your doorstep. We are a country that wants to ensure that we are knowledge-based and we have brought it to your doorsteps. Enjoy. What are we are you full of our roots and culture? <laughs> that was in Jamaica 60. Jamaica 60? What a piece of news, Miss Matty. I feel like my heart going boss up. Just in. The island of Jamaica is on the verge of celebrating its 60th year of independence. Oh, holy, we have to celebrate now. <laughs> they said the people, them, you know, them come here, you know. But you see, when our people decide, say the other people, them free paper, bono, them say if it's war, start it, whatever. We are collect medal, panta, fight, you know. Medal. I'm on top. The celebrations are slated to begin on January 1st, 2022. Organized by the Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport, we have more in this report. I am on site and planning activities are ablaze. Persons are advised to download the Reggae Jamaica app to know what is free. What is free? <laughs> activities for the Jamaica 60 celebration. Yeah. If I don't know the app, to get the updates then. The National Identification System NIDS bill has been passed and its implementation will be done on a phased basis. Prior to this, a series of public consultations were held to answer questions and get feedback. So today, the team reminds us of answers to some frequently asked questions. My great pleasure to welcome you to the third in a series of the Joint Select Committee virtual town hall meetings looking at the National Identification Registration Bill 2020. And again, I am indeed Kimberly McLeod and I will be taking you through today's proceedings. And we begin with a question posed by Justine on Facebook. And Justine wants to know, 
if the NIDS data will be stored in a single database, and I pose this question to the NIDS technical team. In respect of that question, no. The data, the NIDS data will not be stored in a single database. Under clause nine of the bill, it provides for the national databases, which will consist of the civil registration databases and the national identification databases. Under the civil registration databases, there will be multiple databases, such as, for example, birth, birth databases, with, which will deal with matters specifically relating to births. There will be marriage databases, death databases, to give you some examples. Also, under the national identification databases, which will, in which all identity information will be stored, some of the, the, um, the databases under, under national identification will be biometric databases um, and fingerprints databases, to name a few. Thank you so much, Mrs. Miller-Williams. Uh, and also on Facebook, we have George Don McCalla, who wants to know, how will they, I assume the NITS team, and the government protect our information from smart computers acting on their own? Clause 23 provides if, uh, for a framework for which the authority shall put in place security plan that ensures that enrolled individual's identity information is accorded the highest level of security to protect the information from unauthorized access, unauthorized use, unauthorized disclosure, and loss. But what do we mean by this? And what is it that the government is doing? So the government is doing a number of things. And the first one that I want to bring to your attention is that all identity information will be encrypted. All sensitive information in the databases will be encrypted. Very important to know that. The government is also enhancing the cybersecurity infrastructure of all of the ministry um, departments of government and agencies that are of national um, importance and national significance. And these are the entities that are involved with the implementation of the National Identification Program. The government is also uh, establishing um, institutions for data protection and independent oversight of the national, the proposed national identification and registration authority to guarantee oversight and those mechanisms and safeguards. Very important to note that. The government is also strengthening as part of the NIDS program as significant investment in strengthening the networks and the security appliances at the various endpoints that will interact with the NIDS program. Will it be issued free to all Jamaicans? The National Identification Card will be issued free to, to all Jamaicans um, and also persons ordinarily resident in Jamaica who, enro who are enrolled in the system. Mm -hmm. So in terms of um, validity, period of validity, in relation to persons who are 18 years, who are younger than 18 years, it will be valid for a period of five years. So persons who are younger than 18, mm -hmm. the card will be valid for, for five years. For persons who are 18, 18 and older, but younger than 60, it will be valid for 10 years. And persons who are 60 years and older, the card will be valid for 15 years. Mm -hmm. Would it be possible for you to explain uh, what is the rationale behind the periods of validity for the National Identification Card? When you look at m minors um, between uh, from birth all the way to 18, your features tend to change um, quite often. Mm -hmm. And we are using the benchmark that the passport office is using, so we renew using that as a standard to renew every five years. When you're above 18 all the way to 60, I mean, your features tend you know, to change over a 10-year period, and research has shown that. And for persons above 60, um, their features tend not to change. They, they have more like a 15-year period, and that is why we would have used those as the benchmark. 
I'm going to move on now to Krista Z on YouTube, who's asking, when someone accesses the information of another person, can other people in the system see it and see how long they were on the records? Under Clause 24 of the bill, identity information can only be verified with the request of the identity owner. It's important to, to note that. The identity owner must be notified based on the design of the solution, also in the framework that we're looking at, and must be notified every time the, a disclosure or verification is done. Records and the Ministry of Culture presents Reggae on the Pier, the virtual concert with a galaxy of reggae stars. Derek Morgan, Richie Spice, Chris Martin, Romaine Virgo, Taurus Riley, Marcia Griffiths, and Barris Hammond. Sunday, February 27, 7.30 p.m. on the VP Records YouTube channel. Reggae on the Pier, the Reggae Month 2022 finale. Practice good hygiene by washing your hands frequently using soap and water. Here's how you should do it while conserving water. Turn on the tap to wet your hands, then turn off the pipe. Lather your hands and the tap with soap. Turn on the tap and wash your hands, back, front, and in between fingers. Use some of the water to wash off the tap, then turn it off. Dry your hands with disposable hand towels. If you don't have running water, use a hand rub containing 62% or more alcohol. If hand sanitizers are not available, rubbing alcohol, Dettol, white rum or household bleach will do the trick. And if all else fails, let hand washing and the handling of potable water be a two-person event. Each person will take turns pouring and washing hands with sitting water. Now is a good time to consider installing a tap on your containers to reduce the risk of water contamination. Faucets can be easily attached to drums, buckets, or five-gallon water bottles. And to ensure that the outside of the containers are clean when recapping, disinfect it with hand rub containing alcohol that's 62% or more. The five R's of water conservation are also necessary to practice. Reduce water wastage by investing in water-saving devices. Reuse water at least twice before discarding. Replace leaking pipes, faucets, and other plumbing equipment. Recycle wastewater and use it for gardening, car washing, or cleaning of public spaces. And reclaim water through rainwater harvesting. We all must play our part to ensure there's water to combat the coronavirus and stave off prolonged drought. This is where our journey ends, but only for today. Do join us again tomorrow when we'll bring another informative program. In the meantime, stay connected via our website, jis.gov.jm. And while you're online, send your feedback to Jamaica Magazine at jis.gov.jm or via tweet at JIS News. You may also find us on all the major social media platforms and through our mobile app that's Android and iOS compatible. On behalf of the entire production team, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Thank you for watching. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.